Hello, praise the Lord, everybody. Thank you so much for coming tonight and supporting Life Groups. I sure hope that you've enjoyed this as much as we've enjoyed it. There's been so many testimonies of people that have made connections and got uh, deeper in their walks with God by coming to these life groups. So again, thank you so much for joining with us tonight. I also want to take a moment to thank your host, if you don't mind giving them a great big hand of appreciation. Thank you for opening your homes up to us. We know it's not an easy thing to commit to four Wednesdays in a row and have people in your house and cleaning up. And most of you are have worked all day and rushed home to prepare. And so I want you to know personally how much I appreciate it and this group that you have here, how much they appreciate it as well. I also uh, want to encourage everybody to bring a guest, ask a coworker, ask a neighbor, ask a family member. You'll be amazed at how many more people will actually come to a house Bible study before they'll come to the church house. Just seems to be low pressure, seems to be low key. I guess they know it's a home. I, I, I don't know the psychology behind it, but you will find a lot of people will come to the house way before they'll come to the church house. So I encourage you, invite people. And I just lastly wanna say that our Bible study here is going to last about 12 to 15 minutes. It's really a seed thought to get you thinking, to plant something. And after it's over, there will be discussion among the group. And we encourage you to get in that discussion. Uh, we also encourage you to stay on the point of the discussion. Thank you very much. And then when that's done, there will be prayer uh, for any kind of needs. And so we know you're going to have a good time. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into our Bible study here. Tonight, I'm, I'm going to talk to you about the blessed man, the blessed man. I'm going to take this from Psalms, the first chapter and verse one. We'll read through verse number four. It says this, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but they are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. So we're going to talk about the blessed man here tonight. And if I were to ask a raising of hands there, who would like to be blessed? There's no doubt every hand would go up. Now, there are many different definitions of blessing that, you know, we may would have different opinions on. You know, some people think blessings are houses and cars and money and things of that nature. And uh, I, I personally feel like blessings are bigger than that. I think blessings are things that money can't buy. Um, but so there may be a, a discussion on what blessings are that we could uh, have different opinions on, but I believe that all of us will agree we want to be blessed. I don't think there's a man or woman in that group there tonight that would say, nah, uh, I appreciate it though. I don't, but I don't want to be blessed. I think we all want to be blessed. So I wanted to take this Bible study and take a look at how to be blessed. And so in doing so, we're going to take a look here and it tells us a great contrast. You, you can see the difference between the blessed man and the man that's not blessed. And so let's start. In your notes, number one, the blessed man doesn't listen to ungodly counsel. That's your fill in. Ungodly counsel. The blessed man doesn't listen to ungodly counsel. Now, when we talk about ungodly counsel, we're not just 
specifically meaning you can never get any counsel from people who aren't godly. And what I mean by that is when I take my car down to the mechanic shop, when the guy comes out with dirty fingernails, you know, and asks me what's going on, and I start to tell him, I don't begin that conversation by, hey, buddy, were you at church this past Sunday? So it, I, I don't want a litmus test on my mechanic as to how godly he is. That's not what we're talking about. Uh, there are people who who hate God, who really could give you good advice on finances and and various things. But what we're specifically talking about here, and what the Bible is talking about, is advice given, counsel given to you that is ungodly. Not ungodly counselors, but ungodly counsel. So we, the blessed man, if you want to be blessed, and we, the people of blessings, we reject counsel to make us ungodly. Any counsel that comes to make us not like God, we reject it. We, we, don't, we, we don't accept those that kind of counsel. And if you haven't figured it out yet, man, advice is free. And people have a lot of it. And there's counsel that comes to you uh, that you know it is someone's giving it to you. And there's some other times where you don't even realize it. But if you turn on your radio, you listen to music, you're going to hear commercials that are going to be offering free counsel, telling you how to live, how to dress, how to think. Every kind of movie, TV show that you would watch, how to live, how to dress, how to think. Um, various ways. Magazine, plenty of places for us to give examples. But if we're going to be blessed, then we don't accept any counsel that will make us ungodly counsel that'll make us live against what God's principles are. So a blessed man rejects ungodly counsel. Number two in your notes, the blessed man doesn't live like a sinner that your fill-in does. A blessed man doesn't live like sinners do. And that's why they, we reject the counsel that to make us ungodly is because we don't live like sinners anymore. There was a reason why it's a very common theme in the Bible for God to remind his people, I'm the God that brought you out of Egypt. And if you've read that or heard it and wondered, why is that a constant theme, the Lord reminding his people that you were brought up out of Egypt, is because God was drawing a contrast again. Egypt was the world. They were anti-Christ. They were anti-God. Their ways, their lifestyles, their philosophies, their, their ways of thinking were not the way God wanted it to be. So God sent Moses in to deliver them out of Egypt to go to a promised land that he would prepare for them. So we should have a stark contrast in our life of how we live after being baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the wonderful gift of the Holy Ghost and what we call being born again and being brought out of Egypt. So a blessed person, if you want to be blessed, you can't live like you lived before you received the gift of the Holy Ghost and was baptized in Jesus' name. There is, should be a contradiction there when you start looking at how you used to live and how you live now. Your journey now should be fertilizing and nourishing the fruit of the Spirit, as opposed to the works of the flesh, how you used to live, how you used to think and operate. So the blessed man doesn't live like a sinner does. Number three in your notes, the blessed man doesn't allow himself to become scornful. That's your feeling, scornful. He says that don't get in the seat of the scornful. And what does it mean to be scornful? Well, scornful is uh, arrogance at its height, which makes people cynical, critical, and uh, they mock. And so you ever try to do something or be around somebody and they're just cynical, sarcastic, they, they're, everything's beneath them? The blessed man doesn't live that way. Number one, you can't be full of pride and full of the Holy Ghost at the same time. 
And if we were at church, I would say, come on, talk to me. But you can't be full of pride and arrogance and full of the Holy Ghost. Because if the more full of the Holy Ghost you get, the more humble it makes you to think, can you believe that the Creator would live right in here? All my mess, all my junk, but yet He's still here. And so you have to fight that. You have to fight the cynicism, the scorning. You got to fight the, the mockery that comes from pride and arrogance, which is a work of the flesh. So when you feel that rising up in you, you say, no, I reject that. No, that's not how a blessed man lives. A blessed man, a woman is not cynical. They're not arrogant. A blessed man does not sit in the seat of the scornful. They reject it. Now, number four in your notes, here's the, the contrast. We just saw what the ungodly do. They take un counsel that makes them ungodly. They live like sinners. They are cynical, arrogant, proud, and they mock the things of God. But the blessed man in your notes loves and lives by the Bible that you fill in, by the Bible. Verse two says that he delights in the law of the Lord. And he meditates in the law of the Lord both day and night. Now, I'm going to tell you one of the most powerful and precious things that God has given us is his word. If you have not got into a habit of reading your Bible, start it today. Make plans tonight to start tomorrow. Get your Bible reading plan together it's the most powerful, most potent thing. And I know we're in a digital age. Sometimes I'm guilty too. I've got my Bible right here on my phone. And the problem with it, of not holding that Bible and opening it up, is the whole time I'm trying to read my Bible, I'm constantly getting counsel from the ungodly. Distraction keeps popping up. Facebook, somebody's commenting on me. You got an email, you got a voicemail, you got a text, which distracts me. And so I've been recently getting away from reading on my phone or my tablet, and I'm going back to just holding the Bible. I'd love for Sunday to see a hundred Bibles out there in the audience as we just revive reading the word of God, because that's what the blessed man or woman does. They meditate both day and night in reading of the Bible. And so I encourage you, get in the Word, start reading. Now, don't make the mistake of jumping in it and saying, okay, tomorrow I'm reading 50 chapters. We all do that. Don't do that. Start off by reading three verses. That's a good place to start. Three verses. But don't just read them. Meditate on them. What does that mean to meditate? It means to seriously think about it. It means to stay on it. It means to think on until you understand what you just read. It'd be better for you to read three scriptures and receive it, understand it, than to read three chapters mindlessly, skip through it just to hit some quota, some goal. So start off with three verses. And you can use technology. You can get your phone or tablet out and you can Google scriptures on faith and then get open your Bible and just read those and meditate on it. That's where the blessings come from. He says, if you do this, you shall be like a tree planted by rivers of living water and you'll bring forth fruit in your season. He said, your leaf shall not wither and whatsoever you do shall prosper. The blessed man or woman, they prosper because they reject ungodly counsel. They don't live like sinners do. They do not allow life, the world, to make them scornful, cynical, arrogant, proud. But they love the word of God. And a lover of the word of God is going to be blessed. I hope you've enjoyed tonight's Bible study. I encourage you in just a few moments 
to get in that discussion about the Word of God, talk about it, and then have a good prayer for everybody's needs. God bless you. I'll see you on Sunday. I love you.